Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. Trying something new out that my year nine class suggested is getting the webcam going. And I've also thought I'll wear the red Westlake hoodie for the first video. Today's learning objective is in yellow and we are learning to determine the equation of a given exponential graph. And before we get onto that, let's quickly recap what the formula is. So y is equal to a x to the power of x plus b plus c. Um, and to recap, the c relates to how much it's moved up or down. The b relates to how much it's moved left or right. And the a, that's kind of the gradient and that affects whether or not it's growth or decay. And it mainly affects the steepness or shallowness of our exponential curve. So let's get into some examples. Let's have a look at the blue one first. And once we've done that, we'll clear the screen and we'll have a go at the purple one as well. Our starting point is always write down the equation that we're working on. And so we're writing down our formula again. And let's get into our graph. So the first step I'm always looking for is the asymptote of our graph. And it looks like the asymptote is there at minus 2 for that blue graph. And what that means, y equals minus 2. And that means c is going to be equal to negative 2. So that c value there, we're going to change to negative 2. The next step, what I do is I increase my line by 1. So plus 1. And then I draw another line there. And that helps me identify this reference points, which figures out how much has been moved left or right from the origin. So we can see our reference point. That looks like it's just there at 2, comma negative 1. And what that means is it's meant to start at the y-axis. It's been moved over 2. So it's been moved 2 to the right. And because it's now at positive 2, what that means is our b value is going to be negative 2 as well. So we're going to have y is equal to ax minus 2 minus 2 again. Now that we've done that step, we're going to use the coordinate that we know. So I'm circling it now. That's 2, 4. So at that point, we know... So at 2, 4, we know x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 2. We're going to substitute both of those back in. And that only leaves x. And that means we can go away and solve what x is. So y is equal to 2. 2 is equal to a to the power of 4 minus 2. And then we're going to subtract 2 from that as well. So that means 2 is equal to a squared. So that squared means we're going to be left with a quadratic to solve. And we're going to go minus 2. And we're going to shift that minus 2 to the other side. That becomes plus 2. So that becomes 4. A is equal to the square root of 4, which means A can either be 2 or negative 2. Um, what I'm going to do at this point here is quadratics. You always have to check both answers, but I'm going to ignore, I'm just going to change pink colors, but I'm going to ignore the negative answer, and I'll show you why. So if this was a negative cubic, it would, or a negative exponent, it would look like it's going down, like I've just drawn there in orange, which clearly isn't the case for us. So I'm going to ignore that uh, answer because that's clearly not the case for our graph. Okay, and that means we can then finish up our answer for the first one. Y is going to be equal to 2 to the power of x minus 2 minus 2. So a whole bunch of 2s in that question, which I did deliberately. Awesome. So that was the answer to the first one. Hopefully you found that useful. Just really important, make sure you're getting down your notes, getting down examples. That'll help you during your work. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to clear the screen, apart from the formula, and we're going to have a go at that purple um, example now. Okay, guys, we're back. The screen's been cleared. Um, let's get into the purple question. First step for anything we do, our working needs to include our equation. So let's get that down y is equal to a to the power of x plus b 
and plus C at the end. The next step, let's figure out the C. That always relates to the asymptote of our graph. And that tells us how much has been moved up or down. Because that asymptote should be at 0. It's now at 2. So what that tells us is that C value has been increased by 2. So let's put that in our formula. Plus 2 there. We then want to move our asymptote up 1. And that helps us figure out our reference point. So our reference point is there. And that looks like it's at negative 3. And that tells us it's been moved across by 3. Since it's at negative 3, that's been moved across by positive 3. So that means our B value will be positive 3. So we can put that in. So Y is equal to A X plus 3 and then plus 2. We then are going to find our coordinate. So we've got our point nicely labeled. So we've got negative 4 to the power of comma 5. And that means at, at point x is equal to negative 4 and y is equal to 5. We're going to put both of those into our equation. So 5 is equal to a to the power of negative 4 plus 3. And we're going to add 2 to that. 5 is equal a to the power of negative 1 plus 2. We're going to use our exponent rules to change that to 1 divided by a. And that plus 2 is going to move to the other side to be a minus 2. So that becomes 3. And that means 3a is going to be equal to 1. a is equal to 1 third. And so we've now got a, b, and c. We can finalize with our little formula. So y is going to be equal to 1 third to the power of x plus 3. And we're going to add 2 to that as well. So that one is a bit complicated. So if you got that one, well done. And the last thing I want to note is that 1 third, um, that suggests that it's a decay model. So it's going down. Whereas our first example, from memory, that was a 2. Um, that's a growth model, and that was going up. So hopefully you found these two examples useful. Let's get into some more questions.